It is story time with Callie and Grizz. Hello, everybody. My name is Grizz the Storytelling Bear, and I'm really excited to be with you today because today I'm going to share with you one of my most favorite stories. And today's story is about a little boy named Pinocchio. So sit back, relax, and get comfortable. Are you ready? All right, here we go. There once was a carpenter named Geppetto. One day, he was walking through an enchanted forest when he heard a voice. Hello, it said. Geppetto looked around and soon realized that the voice was coming from a magic piece of wood. Talking wood, he thought, how unusual. Geppetto took the magic wood home and carved a little puppet boy from it. He gave the boy a suit of clothes and a hat with a feather in it. The wooden boy danced the room for Geppetto and made him laugh. Hello, he said. Geppetto named the boy Pinocchio. You must go to school like the other children, Geppetto told him. So the next morning, Pinocchio skipped off to school on his wooden legs. As he went along, a cricket hopped up on his shoulder. You look like you could use a friend, he told Pinocchio. I will help you learn right from wrong. A little farther down the road, Pinocchio met a fox and a cat, and they had heard the sound of lunch money jingling in Pinocchio's pocket. Don't go, don't bother going to school, said the fox. Come and play with us instead. Pinocchio, not knowing any better, thought that sounded like a good idea. I don't think you're doing the right thing, the cricket told him. You promised your father you would go to school. But Pinocchio paid no attention to the cricket. The cat and the fox led Pinocchio into a dark forest. If you plant the money here, it will grow into a money tree, they told him. Just come back tomorrow. You'll see. That doesn't sound right, said the cricket. That money was for your lunch. But Pinocchio didn't listen. He dug a hole in the ground and buried the coins in it. Then Pinocchio went home feeling very hungry. He did not tell his father that he hadn't been to school. The next morning, Pinocchio didn't go to school either. Instead, with the cricket on his shoulder, he skipped into the forest to find his money tree. When Pinocchio reached the spot where he buried his coins, there was no money in the tree. He dug down to look for the coins he had planted, but they were all gone. The fox and the cat have played a trick on you, said the cricket. They just wanted to get your money. Pinocchio felt rather silly, but he pretended he didn't care. He stomped off into the forest. I'm going on an adventure, he said. The cricket begged him to go back to Geppetto, but Pinocchio walked until it was too dark and he was a little scared. Soon they came to a tiny cottage. Pinocchio ran to the door and knocked loudly. A pretty fairy with turquoise hair answered the door. We're lost, explained Pinocchio. Can you please help us? The fairy invited them in and gave them some food. Why are you so far from home? She asked kindly. Pinocchio did not want to tell her that he had disobeyed his father. Um, I was chased by a giant. He lied. Suddenly, Pinocchio's nose grew a little. Ah, uh, and the giant was taller than the trees, continued Pinocchio. And Pinocchio's nose grew some more. Um, and then I ran into the forest to escape, he continued, and Pinocchio's nose grew again. He touched it in wonder. I have put a spell on you. And every time you say a lie, your wooden nose will grow and roll. Well, Pinocchio began to cry. He wished he had gone to school as his father had said. I won't tell any more lies, promised Pinocchio. 
the fairy called some friendly woodpeckers who, who pecked at Pinocchio's long nose until it was back to the way it used to be. In the morning, Pinocchio rushed back through the forest. The little cricket perched on his shoulder. From now on, I will do just as father tells me, he said. But when he got home, Geppetto wasn't there. Instead, there was a note on the kitchen table. Dear Pinocchio, I have gone to look for you. I miss you, my son, your loving father, Geppetto. Pinocchio was very sad. He, know he, he knew he had caused a lot of trouble. We must find my father and bring him home, he sobbed. And so he and the cricket set off again. They began their search down by the river. Pinocchio stood too near the edge of the water and he fell in with a splash. The cricket jumped in to help them, but they were both swallowed by an enormous fish. There in the fish's tummy, they found Geppetto. Pinocchio hugged his father tightly. I won't leave you again, he said. The clever wooden boy took the father, took the feather from his hat and tickled the fish. Ha, 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 achoo! The fish gave a mighty sneeze and Geppetto, Pinocchio, and the cricket shot back out through the fish's mouth and landed on the bank of the river. That night, when Pinocchio was tucked into his own little bed, fast asleep, the fairies with the turquoise hair flew in through his window. You're a good, brave boy, she said as he slept, and she kissed him on the forehead. When Pinocchio awoke the next morning, he had found that he was no longer made from wood. He was a real boy. From then on, he was always a good son to Geppetto and the best of friends with the cricket who didn't need to tell him right from wrong ever again. The end. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed one of my favorite stories from Pinocchio. And if you love listening to my stories, please like and subscribe to our channel until you always get notified the next time I tell you one of my favorite stories. Uh, okay, well, it's time for Grizz the Storytelling Bear to get some sleep. Have a good night, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.